So you open up your Ryzen box and you found this cool little spinny thing inside and you're not quite sure where to put it. Well, today we're going to show you where to stick it. What's going on guys? It's Juan from Blueprint PC here. So today I'm going to help out all you beginner builders and first time builders for AMD Ryzen. So in front of me, you can probably see there is some OEM coolers that come with your Ryzen processors. And today we're going to install one of these guys. Uh, I'm gonna kind of go through some details with it, but for the most part, this is gonna your, be your three series type cooler. This will be your five series type cooler. And the installation process is the same. So this should help you out regardless of what you're doing. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead. Let's start uh, busting out the motherboard and get this going for you guys. I'll keep it short. All right, so a basic overview of kind of what's gonna happen here, just so you understand what I'm doing. So uh, I wanna use the little guy, it's cause it's clean-ish. So, there's four screws on all these coolers here for the uh, Wraith, Spire, and Stealth. And what we need to do is actually attach those spring-loaded screws to the motherboard. And that is actually gonna happen right here where you see these four screws. This bracket is actually for the Wraith coolers and a lot of aftermarket coolers actually will clip right onto these little tabs on the end here. Um, you, again, you can see that in my Aorus MB450 video uh, where I installed the Wraith cooler in that one. It's a bad video. My all my videos are bad, but regardless. So you can see I also have the processor already installed. That's important note to make. You do not want to install these with thermal paste onto an empty socket because you're going to wreck that socket. And that is what she said. Uh, that is actually getting threaded into this little reinforcement plate on the back of the motherboard here. So you can actually see the ends of the screws right there. And yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and start taking this apart and we'll get it done. All right, guys, so one last little disclaimer here is I'm actually using this on the foam insert that came with the motherboard in the box, so it's not going to damage it in the back. Um, if you're doing this on a hard surface, you're probably going to damage something, so I would find some sort of mat or pad. The best thing is an anti-static mat to work on, so you make sure you don't damage anything. I do have an anti-static mat, but my rails are metal, so I grab those, make sure I discharge any ESD that I have, because it's dangerous. So, as stated before, we're going to go ahead... We're gonna unthread these, and my hope is too, is that plate on the back won't shift at all, since I'm sitting on this little foam pad here. And that's coming out, there we go. So that's out. One bracket on. So there's little studs that kind of push through the PCB of the board, and that actually helps keep that bracket in place. So we don't need to worry about it moving around too much especially considering the bottom of it's supported so it's not gonna fall out the bottom. All right. And all of these screws are the same length so there's no concerns there or things to worry about that may be causing some issues. Okay, so again, these brackets come off and I would just take these, the four screws, put them in like a sandwich bag, stick them back in your motherboard box and just save them because you never know if you sell the motherboard to a friend or something like that later on down the line or you use it in a different project and you're going to need that mounting hardware. So, like I said today, <clears throat> we're installing this one, which is the Wraith Spire non-RGB. And one of the things that really kills me about these is it's going to mount like this. So when you're looking at it in the PC case, it's going to sit like this. A little bit of OCD goes crazy because I feel like the AMD should be on the top. So, but... Let's get it installed. So go ahead, carefully line it up. Get... No uh, ha ha intended, but get the tip in. Well, I failed, be right back, gotta get a longer screwdriver. All right guys, so uh, pro tip, make sure the screwdriver you have is long enough because that's what she said, but it just was way too short. So, go ahead, get this threaded in. Start just working the tip in. Just get these. I recommend going corner to corner. Get those gently threaded in there. You're gonna hear all kinds of fun noise, those springs, especially when they're fresh like that. So get those started. Make sure everything gets aligned properly. That's the biggest reason why you want to do that. You just want to make sure everything gets aligned quickly. So then go ahead and start. Oh, that noise. I'm going to go ahead and stop putting you through punishment. 
I'll do a little quick cycle as I get these threaded down and talk in a second. All right, guys, so now that the noise has stopped, we got these all threaded down in essentially, and you're not gonna wanna crank on these. When you get these fully threaded down, they're gonna come to a stop. They're gonna stop on their own. You don't need to crank it past that. Once they get bottomed out, just make sure they're snug. And if I can find the hole, they're all nice and snug. And boom. The springs on them is gonna help keep the retention there properly, and then you can actually, boom. So we're good. She's properly secured, and that's honestly really all it is. So from there, You'll just find your favorite pan fit, uh, pan, fan pin header on your motherboard, which I actually have one right here for your CPU fan. Oh yeah. I'll actually rewrite wire that later because that will drive me crazy staring at that little hoop. But anywho, so once you're plugged in on the fan pin header, you're good to go. And that's it. Quick, simple, fairly painless unless you grab the wrong screwdriver. That makes it harder. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap up another one here. So I just wanna say thank you again for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button. And before I catch you in the next one, let me know what you guys are working on. I'm kind of curious as to what processors you guys are uh, currently doing with builds or just what your current system has in it. Then again, motherboard. What motherboard do you guys choose and why? So let me know in the comments below. Catch you guys in the next one. Oh, my God.